Today I thought I'd show how I make a dovetail drawer. I've got a showcase I'm making out of oak, white oak, for a customer that has a drawer in it, so I thought I'd use hand tools only to make the drawer. This is a dovetail marker that I made. It's just a piece of plywood that's got a 14 degree angle cut down into it. I'll need an adjustable square, three chisels, a three quarter, half, and a quarter, a dovetail saw, uh, two marking gauges. I prefer the wooden type. And finally, just a regular old mallet. First thing we start with is the drawer front. This is white oak. I've already milled it to thickness, cut it to length, and ripped it to width. Now I'm going to take a marking gauge that's already set and just scribe the end grain to establish the depth that I'm going to have my side pieces come into the drawer front. Flip it in for end, do the same thing on the other side, just four or five, three or four passes across, it'll make a scribe line down in there deep enough. I'm going to draw in here with a pencil just how deep it is so that you can actually see it in the picture. It's about three sixteenths of an inch away from the outside. Okay, now on our drawer sides and our drawer back, I'm making them out of clear white pine. It carves easy and uh, is real easy to chop out. Now on my drawer back, you'll note that it's about 11 sixteenths narrower than my sides. I do that deliberately so that my drawer bottom can be solid wood piece that's chamfered in. You'll see that in a minute. I want the drawer back and the drawer front to be identical in length, so to make that happen, I'm using a marking knife or an X-Acto knife and laying them out together and then with the knife I'm just making a score line across there. That gives me a real nice uh, fine line to use to make my cut. Now with my drawer back cut to the same length as my drawer front, I'm ready to move on to the drawer sides. I'll slide them both into the case and get them seated all the way in, all the way to the back. Make sure that they're in there the right way. And with an X-Acto knife, I'm just going to scribe up the side of the front edge so that I know exactly where the outside length is. Now with that mark there, that's where my drawer front should come to. Barely see it in this video. It's right there, but I'll mark it here with a pencil so you can see it better. that little mark is where the drawer front should be. So with the scribe line that's already on the drawer side, or on the drawer front, I'll put the front, very front edge right even with that, that line that's on the side, and then where that scribe line is on the drawer front, that's where I need to cut the drawer sides to link. Make a line with a square, cut them to link. Okay, now after all the pieces are cut to length, we're ready to do some layout. I'm going to take the drawer front first and do the layout the pins. I'm a pe uh, pins guy first, so I lay out the pins and cut them first. And the reason for that is it's easier to get in and mark your tailboards when your pins are done. You'll see in a minute how much easier that is. If I was to lay out the tails first, all you have is just that little sliver front edge and it's just too hard for me to try to get in there even with the marking gate or marking knife. Here you can see I've just laid out everything, found the center and laid out my dovetail angle. Flip the board around how I'm doing the other side. You can see how nice this little gauge helps out. You don't have to use a bevel square and set it for the slope angle that you want. It's already done, all you gotta do is set it, put it on there. I've had this thing for probably 10 years and used it every dovetail I've cut. I like my pins on the on my pins I like them real small pins. Just makes it for sure to look like a hand cut dovetail. Now these lines I'm drawing straight down here, they are the most important line to go off of when you're cutting. 
the angle can vary on the edge of the board, but these lines, your your saw cut needs to be straight in line with them. That'll keep everything lined up and your dovetails tight, uh, having tight fitting dovetails. I make them fairly long because I'll show you here in a minute. I cut into the drawer front. I cut farther than the scribe line. It makes it easier to chop it out later on. That's why those lines are so long. Now we need to set the thickness on the marking gauge to the thickness of the door sides, the door back. Here I'm just showing the the tip of that point on the marking gauge is right in line with the edge of the board. I'll just use the edge of the marking gauge, cut a scribe line on the inside face of the door front. That gives me my stop position for how deep I want to cut the chop out the uh, dovetails. There's a little scribe line. Okay, now I'm ready to start cutting the uh, the, the uh, pin board. Uh, you'll see that I'm using my thumb just as a guide there. I start to cut on an angle and I just kind of lift it up a little bit. And I'm going way past the scribe line. That will help later on minimize the amount of time it's going to take to hog out everything with chisels. Plus it was on antiques so it's not really all that uncommon. You see I put my fingers right in front of that Blade just to kind of give me a little starting point that really helps you uh, get your tracking and everything right and you want to stay right in line with those lines that went down the board that's really important okay now we're ready to start chopping out the waste with the chisels I've made a a uh, driving cut on the splat grain and I'm just trying to take out as much as I can towards the end grain uh, Angle the chisel just slightly underneath the tails so it doesn't break out the tails. If you cut straight in at, at a flat, you have a tendency to pop the edge of the tails out, which will screw you up. And you see on this half-inch chisel, I've taken and run it through a grinder and kind of knife edge the uh, edges. That helps get in here a lot easier. Now when I'm chopping down from the scribe line, I like to pull the chisel out just a little bit to give it an undercut. That makes the uh, uh, tailboard set down in there easier and you don't have to try to worry about getting it so perfectly flat. This is a little exaggerated but just a two or three degree angle is good enough. You can see here I've just got a got about a three or four degree angle there which is a little too much but it'll be okay. Now I just scribe down or chisel in where that scribe line is on the front edge. This shows it a little bit better up close. You can see here I'm just taking off that top at an angle and then I come in on the flat and remove the middle waist. That's the safest way to do this. And you just keep doing that a little bit at a time. You put it right back to where you started your, your uh, initial pounding cut and then come in and take your waist cut. Again, going right underneath each tail, and then hit in the middle. I'm staying away from the scribe line completely until I get most of this waste out of here. Now I'll go right up to that scribe line and chop, but I want to stay just in front of it because the bevel of the chisel will push it back just slightly. And if you pound in with it right on the scribe line, you'll go too deep. Now there's what it should look like. Now after I've got all my pins cut in the front, I want to make my scribe line all the way around on all the rest of the boards. So this is my bottom and my two sides, or my back and my two sides. I'm just going across two or three times, flipping the board, running it again. And this uh, marking gauge is set for the thickness of the drawer sides. 
Now with the back done, I'm going to do the uh, sides. You have to go all the way around because you want to clip off the uh, edge grain. You have to saw down to it on a line, so you need a line there to kind of guide you. Now I'm only doing the back side of this because the front side has to be a different uh, marking gauge set. Now we're ready to start with the dovetail marker. And this is the back. The back has to be done a certain way. You have to start it just like you normally do. Draw your pencil line across. But instead of going to the opposite side, you just pull it down and then come back and do one pin. Since the back is so much shorter, this is the only way you can do this to make it look uh, right. Or the best way, I should say. And you can see here, I'm just lining up. You can see why I did that. Clip off, cl clip off that little bit of waste down at the bottom side there where my finger is. And right here is where the door bottom should go and pass through. Now we just want to take the square and go straight down to our scribe line. See here the lines are going right to the scribe line. Now we're ready to start our saw cut. Again, I'm just using my thumb as a reference point to get me started. Make a slight, a slight cut there and then move my fingers so that you can see. And I just go right down to the scribe line on the back. This is a very nice sharp saw and it does a great job. But in this pine, it's just so soft that it'll just about anything will saw it. And you'll notice that I stay at the same angle until I get all those cut. And then I'll just change my angle of my saw. So I did those two that are going the same way. I did those cuts first so I didn't have to change my hand position. I came back and did the other one. Now I'm just making a couple saw cuts in the waist so that it's easier to chop out. Now this pencil mark just shows me where I have to remove the waste. Make sure that you don't cut your tails instead of the waist. Very easy to get confused and do that. Now I'm just staying right inside that scribe line a little bit. Chopping down a little bit and then just like I did on the front just coming in and hogging out a little bit of the waste. You don't want to go all the way through though on these t uh, through, t through dovetails. You want to go about halfway or a little bit more and then flip the board over and do the other side. I'll flip the board over here so I can chop out. If you don't, it'll just it'll tear up your uh, pin board. I'm going to draw a little pencil line here. So that you can see where the actual scribe line is. And you can see I've left a little bit of meat there so that I don't go too far. And now with the chisel set, I'm just going to set it right inside that line. And you'll notice that once I chop down with the mallet, it pushes me back just a touch. Now to cut the, the remaining waste off this end, I'm just pushing one of my bench dogs up, starting to saw and, and cutting almost to the line but not quite. You want to pare down this little edge. See there, I've got a little bit of meat left on there from the scribe line. I just want to chisel right down to that line, all the way around. 